so funnily enough, even though I started out hating this deck quite a bit, I've actually, uh, it's kind of grown on me a bit. Uh, mostly because I've been finding different ways to, I've been making, I've been finding new ways to play the deck, basically. So, like, for example, usually I would fall, I would start with, uh, and by the way, I haven't watched anyone else play this, uh, this deck. Uh, except for my direct opponents on the ladder or whatever. I've made a very specific point of not going out of my way to watch other players like Swim play a deck like this or Impetuous Panda or whatever, uh, because I want to discover it for myself. So if I do make some mistakes or if I'm doing something that's obviously wrong, um, the reason for that is because I'm very, very particularly not going out of my way. But anyway, so I'm kind of I'm adjusting my strategy to not just open up with the Siege support and instead open up with things like Troll Lull. Uh, because I found, like, I'm really sick of, like, starting off with a huge combo, uh, like, Siege Support into Henselt, because I think it's too much tempo too early, and it allows my opponent to not invest much into the round and just pass. Uh, so I've been changing up, I've been changing that up a bit, and I've been doing things, like I said, uh, opening with Trouble Lull, sometimes, like, Redanian uh, Knight or Elite or whatever it is, sometimes with the Ballista, or, uh, not Ballista, the battering ram and then i'll sometimes take out the battering ram with henselt which is real good it's kind of it's relatively unexpected because i actually haven't seen other players do it all that much but i've been using that a lot as a kind of bait and switch with the siege support and it's, it's been working out really nicely for me i've even been saving henselt for round uh, round three just like one um one battering ram and then henselt for the round three and that's won me quite a few games as well and it's a really strong finisher because obviously it's like uh eight or rather it's like 30 it's like 34 ish uh if you and you don't even need to really hit anything uh not anything important anyway for it still to be worth quite a lot it's almost like a slightly b a bit better crowns with a bit more setup but still nice So in short, I'm going up against this deck that's fairly common. It's a, a deck that like scales exponentially once they get some of these uh, eight strength dwarves on the field, and then they start like um, using full moon potions or whatever it's called, and their like their tempo just explodes. Right. And the purpose of this video is basically to point out um, what I felt was a really good spy. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let me set this back up because I kind of got distracted for a second. <clears throat> so all the while, I've just been playing out all my units, make sure to get a value out of my crewmen, getting value out of my seed support by playing out the poor flank infantry and then i'm also setting up uh kira or whatever her name is to get some armor on these dudes so i can eventually uh sap that armor off and now because it's 3155 uh 24 points is relatively achievable even with uh it, with one card and even achievable with two cards um and i don't i don't really want to give up the round even if i do go up two cards up that's kind of what I found with this deck is that I really had to, from the beginning, I had to change the way I think about this deck. I've always been kind of obsessed with playing objectively, quote unquote, correct. And that's usually going two cards up to, uh, to lose. Going two cards up and losing a round is fine. Uh, but I've been noticing like that is not the way I, I need to play this deck. I need to win first round. I need to get in control of the game. And in general, I even if I don't. Even if I'm passing up that two card advantage, I usually make it up by being able to bleed effectively in the second round using, you know, my uh, experience, knowledge or whatever. So I am missing out on one advantage and I'm getting another. I'm actually getting eff effectively double the advantage because this deck really wants to win round one and then I can control round three. So I, I don't want to just pass here, even though I'm pretty certain she needs at least two cards to pass me. So I'm going to play my spy out. I want this round to keep going. 
And, and I also have a Marigold Tailstorm, which is fantastic for cutting down that spy and whatever else is boosted here on this range row. So there goes the first one. These get double buff, basically. And in general, I'm trying to use my battery ram, so I make sure I'm making sure to get as much value out of them as possible every time. And that means also including, oh, this is another thing. I've been using my battering rams to set up units so that whenever I do use the next battering ram, I can make sure to either get a kill or set up another one. Uh, it's a little bit complicated until you get a feel for it. But once you get a feel for like the numbers and the way the units are positioned, uh, you can begin to not necessarily just hit one battering ram and then hit one battering ram and then hit one battering ram. You can kind of interconnect them you can kind of slide them into each other so that you're getting as much value as possible and it, granted it's it's kind of a lot of thought considering you're only getting something like i don't know let's say you play all three battering rams maybe you get like five more value or like like six more value like tops but if you can just get into the half of it uh initially then it becomes second nature later and those six points it's like it's yeah it's only six points for one set of cards but you have like 10 sets of cards right and you need to be able to or you have like you know whatever five sets of cards and that you know if you do six points per every five sets of cards it's like 30 points overall that just you know kind of th theoretical thinking that improves your play overall because remember we're not going for w just winning the game we're going for improving overall and just because, I, just in case I didn't make the point clear, I used the spy because I specifically wanted this round to go on longer. I don't want to give it this round and allow my opponent to take control of round two and three. I want to be the one to win. I want to be the one to be in control. So if we go into round two, I can bleed some of these cards out of her and then just pass without her actually getting value out of them. Now I'm just kind of biding my time. I'm thinking about using Marigold Tailstorm. It looks like they don't have any gold weather, which is a mistake, I think. <laughs> but I go ahead and just play the poor flank infantry. Uh, I think I made a decision there. I was thinking, do I have a play that's worth at least eight? And pretty much all the cards in my deck are worth at least that much. So it was a pretty safe first light. Speaking of first light, in the next video, I'll go over why I included that and the importance of it. Which go uh, goes into meta adaptation as well. But that's for next time. For now, uh, also I've made a video a while back where I was contemplating like, oh, okay, I need to not I need to not sit on my miracle telescope for too long, and this is exactly where I think I use it. You could wait until the very last turn to kind of like, you know, surprise, I got a miracle telescope, but I want to win this round and I don't want to overplay too much, so I'm gonna play it now. I think. Yes, I'll play it now. I want to get that value out while I can and uh, put a lot of pressure on her. Her as an ethnate leader. On Marigold Hellstorm, which is fine. It doesn't actually hit me for that much. Now I need to be able to pass the strength. Actually, I'm unsure why I used Deeks right here. I think playing out my Heavy Cavalry would have been enough, right? Because this is 8 plus uh, 3, 11, 75. Yeah, I think playing just the Heavy Cavalry was would have been enough. I think I was saving the Heavy Cavalry for a later turn or for like round 3, like where I could get uh, like a, a, a Shawnee Troll or something like that. But I don't know. I, I, I kind of think that was a mistake. I think he used a little bit too much power here. I could have just saved Deekstra for round three. Of which I've also had quite a few games where I've won with just Deekstra on round three. When I say quite a few, I mean like, I don't know, one or two. <laughs> but I've played a lot of the, a lot of games of this and like a very similar kind of through line happens. Yeah, I think I think I should have played Heavy Gallery there, but it's fine. I'm really actually that's really weird because I'm very keen on using Deekstra for the very, very end. So playing him there, I'm, I must be missing something that I thought about at the time. In the case that they had any carryover, this is where Dor, uh, Dorgare 
comes i'm just gonna call him dory this is where dory comes really in handy because then you can counter the carryover by having some carry by creating carry by creating carry why can't i talk by creating carryover of your own because once you play this card your opponent's forced to play a card but since this card goes into the next round you can play it safely but since uh, playing Dora Gray would only get the one card that I was going to get anyway, there's no point in playing it here. I can just save it for later. Dora Gray is also really effective in... Um, when, you're go when you've lost round one, you're going to round two. Because it's effectively a play, but not really a play. It's really nice. So because I won one round, I uh, because I won round one, I have control of round two. He plays out his 13 strength bronze, which is fantastic. That's a really strong bronze that he's essentially wasting. Because remember, it doesn't matter how much they win round two by. Now I can drop door great pretty safely. This is less than optimal because I have no armor to strip, but it's okay. This is a really tricky situation because, <laughs> yeah, this is a really, really unfortunate situation, which my hand was not only bad, it was actually anti-synergistic. Because uh, I don't want to play Battering Ram, because then I would have to be forced to play, uh, I would be forced to hit his 8 strength dude that would get buffed anyway, which is not good. Uh, but I guess, I wasn't really expecting Decoy, but in hindsight it might have been okay to use my Battering Ram to kill it off and then hit the other guy. But, I don't know. That's such a weird thing to do, though. Like, you can't... Playing out on Decoy is such a weird thing, because not everyone takes it. But it's something to be aware of. I think I maybe... That may have been my best opportunity to use my Battering Ram, but I kind of missed the opportunity. It's something to think about in the future. It's something that I do kind of... I'm, I am cognizant about, but... Oh, yeah, this is funny. <laughs> so, I'm like, don't pick Marigold Tailstorm, because you're not going to get any value off it. So, I don't know if my opponent can see this, but I'm like... I. Whatever, like I'm trying to, <laughs> whatever, whatever my opponent's choosing something, I try and hover over what I think is the best choice to try and help them out a little bit. And what's funny is that this actually ends up losing this person the game. <laughs> so we use Marigold Tailstorm, which is um, it's three, four, five, right? Yeah, it's only five. If you use the potion, uh, let's say you use the first light. The first light gets him like eight. Or it gets him like 13, one of his uh, his spell uh, spell tell bronze dudes that are like 13 strength. That would have won in the game if you used potion on these back two. That would have been six. Does it buff by four or is it buff by three? I actually don't remember. Even if it was if it was by four, he would have won. If it was by three, he would have tied. Even just using on this one unit would have given him... Uh, if it was four, it would have given him six. So that was a, a, a game costing mistake there by using Marigold Tailstorm. And if I had played my uh, double cavalries first, he would have hit that and won. Or if I'd played my Baton Ram like on the same row as any of these, he also would have won. There's a lot of like tiny micro decisions that just barely won me this game. And I win by one. <laughs> Good stuff, man. <laughs> Oh, that was crazy. So many like tiny, like just barely things went my way. If he had just played like first light or if he just played the potion, he would have won. If I had mispositioned my units just by a little bit or mistimed it, I would have lost. Uh, if I had hit one of his dwarf dudes, I would have lost. There's just so many little things that like my hand was pretty terrible considering, but still pretty funny. All right. So the whole point of this video was basically that uh, I just use a pretty good spy in round one to make round one longer so I can ensure both that I soak up as many of their cards as possible while at the same time getting as much value out of my cards uh, and winning the round and getting control of rounds two and three. It's something I've covered relatively a lot, but you know, it's just another example of that. Thanks for watching.